The government are drawing up proposals to roll out so-called Plan C measures after Christmas. This according to the Times newspaper. Measures would include pubs and restaurants being limited to outdoor drinking and dining. Good luck with that in January. No social mixing indoors and a rule of six for outdoor gatherings. Happy New Year, everyone. Where do we start with this? It's been almost two years, folks. We socially distanced. We masked our faces. The vast majority had the vaccines. People gave up their jobs or businesses. Our kids gave up their education. We relinquished our liberties. We worked out to Joe Wick's videos. We baked banana bread. We drank wine on Zoom and we protected the NHS. And yet, here we go again. The same old script. Lockdowns, masks, work from home orders, arrows in supermarkets, and the new fresh hell of COVID vaccine passports, which link your health status to certain services and freedoms. As we enter 2022, we can't sign up for another year, two years, five years, 10 years of this. Never before has a single disease, one non-fatal to the vast majority of the population, and for which a third of people have been told to pretend they've got, ever shaped a society and its wider public policy. It's just never happened. Just on the money alone, we haven't borrowed on this scale since German bombs rained over London, and I don't think the national threat is remotely comparable. We've never stopped the world for a disease before, and yet further ruinous measures beckon for the Omicron variant, which appears to be on a par with a bad cold. This according to the medic who discovered it and Tim Spector from the respected Zoe COVID data app. Metro newspaper have kindly published the symptoms outlined by experts of Omicron. Thank you, Sebastian. Here we go. The five symptoms to watch out for are, wait for it, folks, fatigue, night sweats, scratchy throat, dry cough, mild muscle aches. And we shut down the country for that. In any difficult winter season, two to three hundred people a day can very sadly die from colds and flu. So why, having always accepted that sad fact, have the rules suddenly changed? The latest YouGov polling suggests for the first time that a majority of the public are against further measures. It's clear that the British people are starting to have enough. And I'm clear that we need to shape the narrative in the new year, not our leaders. Because if we leave the government and doomsday scientists in charge, which has smashed our economy and society, brought about unspeakable and unquantifiable human damage and a colossal non-COVID death toll, none of this will end. I fear that policymakers around the world want to change society forever, and they see this as their great opportunity. And it's only us, the people, that can say no. And I think the tide is turning. Now, you know how much I love hearing from you on this programme. It's the highlight of my show every single evening. And I think this email sent to me by Ian sums it up perfectly. And if you'll forgive me, I'm going to read this email to you right now. And Ian, thank you so much for getting in touch. Hello, Mark. Me and my family are beside ourselves bemused and very worried by the illogical and nonsensical action of our government, which is now a dictatorship. It seems we no longer live in a democracy. Ian goes on. We know for a fact that Omicron is a much milder virus. We know for a fact that the vaccinated and unvaccinated are both contracting and transmitting COVID-19. We know for a fact that other European countries have tried vaccine passports for months and they don't reduce infections or positive tests. In fact, quite the reverse, their case numbers have rocketed. Ian continues, why, oh, why are we introducing vaccine passports? It's illogical and it's going to do untold damage. Unless one plausible explanation is that it's solely to force people to take the booster and the vaccine. It smells to us, says Ian, that it's actually all planned out already. And within the next three weeks, passports will be required for entry to pubs, clubs, restaurants and more. 
and our economy will be further wrecked, people's livelihoods shattered, and all for coercing a few more hundred thousand people to take the vaccine they don't want and probably don't need. Why? asks Ian. My father, says Ian, was a doctor who died several years ago, and he would be turning in his grave if he could see what we were doing. It's all so wrong. I'm heartened that GB News seems to be fair and happy to look at both sides of opinion. And I hope you may agree with me and millions of other people and may be able to help a little by airing our severe worries. Please, God, may sense prevail. Best wishes, Ian. Well, Ian, thank you so much for that. The big day, the 25th of December, is a week away. Don't let them cancel Christmas. Don't let them cancel New Year. And don't let them cancel the rest of our lives. We're only here once, very briefly. Right now, this isn't living. It's existing. And life without the freedom to lead it as we see fit isn't worth living at all.